I come to you today with a heavy heart. Cubs are not going to be in the playoffs this year. Just <laughs> looks like the Braves are going to be there, but hey, that's been on my mind. Uh, visitors with us today. Any visitors? Thank you for being here today. Hope you hear the, uh, how uh, our church is at Bible teaching and Bible preaching church. And, and uh, just hope you enjoy your visit today and hope you found a pew seat that sits good to you and you'll find us again. A uh, few twists and turns of things that are going on. Bible study tonight at 6. Wednesday night is at 7. Next Saturday is Community Day. Now that's going to start at 10 and go to about 2. There's a sign-up sheet in the back for set-up, clean-up, for homecoming sign-up sheets for anybody in the back. And uh, is there a part of that where you can sign up just to be a taste tester on that? And test, just no. So if that happens, I'd like to get my name on, especially when it comes to the chocolate. Uh, tonight's youth group uh, from 4 to 530. Brad's going to talk more about that. And then next Sunday, there's a joint service. We've got some visitors coming from the Dominican Republic. That's going to be here. And I think there'll be no small groups next week, but uh, there'll be a joint service next week for that. Okay, uh, if I left out anything, we'll pick it up along the way. October is a busy time at Arthur Christian Church, and all uh, the history of this church has always been a busy time. Uh, and if I get all this right, uh, homecoming is going to be com uh, coupled with Pastor Appreciation Day. So when we have homecoming, that'll be Pastor Appreciation Day. Appreciation Day. And let your heart lead you to show your appreciation for the pastors and all that they've done here. You know, there's nothing, there's no new joke on, that can be made. People say, that's a new joke. Not a new joke, it's just being told different. There are no new sayings that people can say that are profound because with, they've been said before, it's just a matter of how you say it. And I was fumbling with something I wanted to share with you, and my wife, who is absolutely my best friend, she said, I think you can help you with that. And she, she said it. I said, well, who said that? She said, Billy Graham. I said, you mean to tell me that I'm about to say something that Billy Graham said? She said, no, I'm going to tell you that you probably read this and just remembered that Billy Graham said it. So, so there's nothing new. So I'm going to give Billy Graham credit for this, but I'm going to put it in my words. Pastor Appreciation. Last Sunday, I sat up here and I cleared my throat and I wiped my eyes. And I went through a lot of emotions. It was a roller coaster ride for me as I listened to Carnegie. Then a few Sundays ago, I listened to Brother Bill stand up here and deliver a message that I asked myself. There were 100 people in that church. Why was I the only one that he was talking to? And I carried that message with me. Today, Brad's going to bring you a message. So we got, we got a great team here at Arthur Church. But Billy Graham said it, and I'm going to put it in my own words. The best test of a preacher is not when we go out of here and we say, Man, that was a great sermon today. That was a great message today. The rest of the statement should be, yes, it was a great message, but how did it motivate me to do more for my church? Let's pray. Good morning, Lord. We thank you for everybody that's here today. And for those that can't be with us, Lord, we just ask that you be with them and bring us to our church. And uh, for our visitors today, Lord, thank you for sending them our way. And let the love that's in this church, let the message that comes from this pulpit fill their hearts and that they may return and bring someone with them. And Father, during this time of pastor appreciation and homecoming and all the things that go on in our Christian church, when we leave this church and when we leave this campus, Lord, I just ask you to let us carry ourselves, let the words from our mouth, let folks around us know that we are God-fearing, God-loving. Members of your world, where you promise us grace and eternal life, and let us always glorify your name. I ask this in your son's name. Amen. Sunday um, at 6, and there will be finger foods if you bring them. So bring finger foods next Sunday night. We can have a fellowship with Tomas um, and just enjoy his, his company. Um, just a great ministry there in the Dominican Republic, and, and we are very heavily involved um, as a church there, and so we definitely want to have, have a warm welcome and a good attendance for him next Sunday night at 6. Again, Saturday is community day at the Bell Off Fire Department. Um, we're going to be having hot dogs. We're cooking the hot dogs, and they're providing other things, so 9.30 is when we need to have the hot dogs ready. Uh, the hot dogs have already been uh, 
cooked. I'm cooking the hot dog, so we're gonna get the grill out there and do a nice grilled hot dog. We got some chili coming, we got some onions coming, all the fixings. So start at 10 to 2 is when the community day begins. So if you want to come out and help serve those hot dogs, that'd be great. Um, if you just want to come out and just fellowship, walk around and say, hey, I'm from Arthur Christian Church. What can I do for you? That's the whole concept of community day. So please come next Sunday, next Saturday, 9.30 is when we have the hot dogs over there ready to rock and roll. So if you want to help with that, please be here by 9 um, so we can start wrapping them and getting them ready. Uh, from 10 to 2, we'll be serving and just doing some uh, good loving on our community members so let them know that we're here for them so please put that on your calendar um, for next Saturday so with that being said if you pull out your prayer list we do have our long term and short term today so starting with our short term I do want to add Roy Elks he is currently in the hospital running some tests not sure what's going on there but uh, just want to continue to pray for Roy Elks as he's in the hospital they try to figure out what is going on um, with him um, He's been there since Thursday. Again, we want to continue to pray for Bill and Lisa as they're on vacation. I think they're coming back either today or tomorrow or sometime uh, in the next 24 hours. So we pray for Lisa and Bill will safe travels back home. Um, I'm glad he was able to get away and just have some time. We just want to pray for safe travels. Again, um, those listed in bold, we have Benjamin Robertson. Um, he is technically hernia, I guess you could say, so we're trying to figure out what's going on there, so continue to pray for my dad, Benjamin Robertson, of course, we're going to continue to pray for the family of Kristen Dawson, who passed away, um, again, the Warders family, we're going to pray for special prayer for um, the next coming weeks, again, a lot of things going on, our short term is short, which is a blessing, we can remove some names, we've got some praises, uh, we also want to remember those in our church family that are those caretakers, those ones taking care of the sick. If you look on your long term, we do have one update. Jordan Corbett, which was added by Lauren and Andrew, um, she actually had her last chemo treatment and was able to ring the bell, uh, which is a blessing there. We still want to keep her on the prayer list, but again, it's a great blessing when you can take that last uh, chemotherapy and, and ring that bell, and, and we hope that God's blessing will be on her and that healing process will happen. Again, Everything else on our long term, if there are any updates or additions, let myself know, Pastor Bill, or even call Lynn, um, or you can email Melinda. She will definitely get that out there um, so we can make sure we have some updates for November. Uh, but again, as, as you take this perilous home, put it on your refrigerator, in your car, at work, wherever you know you can see it on a daily basis. So that way it can be a reminder of how we need to pray for our congregation, pray for those caretakers, pray for those who are going through treatments or going through those um, long-term effects. So again, I just challenge you to please do that um, as a church family because we are known as a prayer church and I think that's an awesome thing. So with that, now let us go to the Lord in prayer and I challenge you to please join me. This is your time to talk to your Heavenly Father and so just don't listen to my words. Speak to your Father. He is now listening to us. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. What a beautiful day it is to be in your house, Father God. And we're just so blessed that we have seen names on our prayer list be removed because you have answered that prayer. And that is a wonderful thing, Father God. And we see that each and every day as you answer prayers in our congregation. We see those emails. We see those praise reports, Father God. And it's just a blessing. And we give it all to you. There's nothing we can do to help heal the sick, to help mend the, the hurt. Only you can do that through uh, your hands with the doctors and the nurses and the, the physical therapists and, and so on. So, Father God, we'll just bless you for that. Father God, we've, we've lost some loved ones, uh, Father God, and we know that's sad that we uh, will miss them here on this earth, but we know that if they had you in their heart, then they're in a much better place, Father God. They're seeing your face. And Father God, we can just praise you for that. And we can still cherish those memories here on earth, knowing that one day they gave us the gift of seeing them again. Father God, as we go through this uh, church service, may you just be with us. May you keep our minds open and our hearts open. May you forgive us of our sins and our trespasses. May we focus now solely on praising you through song and through word. Father God, I ask that you speak through me today. May it not be my words, but may you deliver the message that you feel this congregation needs to hear today. And I thank you for that. 
Father God, be with the kids as they again listen to this message. May they enjoy it. And may they be able to go into their schools tomorrow and, and spread the gospel. Father God, be with us as we take Holy Communion. May we truly honor that part of our service where it represents your body and your blood was poured out for us. Father God, thank you so much for what you're doing and what you're doing for this congregation. And again, Father God, be with us as we continue to pray for our sick, be with the caretakers, the nurses, the doctors, wherever that person may have to walk into, may your presence be there, may it be known, and may they reach to you in their high top mountains where they're excited or even their lowest valley, as we know you're there no matter what. You will never leave us, you'll never forsake us. We we'll say these things in your name. People said it. Amen. Amen. All right, children, church, we come on four children for children's minute. Am I good now? All right, I have a voice. Can you make me sound like Mickey Mouse for this part of the service? Okay. All right. All right, how y'all doing? Good. Come on up, Isaac. You're scared of me? Yeah, I'm a big scary guy, but I love you, though. All right, so last Sunday night, what did we have? We had some baptisms, right? And so I got some certificates that I want to present to those that are here, right? So I'm going to honor everybody who got baptized last uh, Saturday. The first was Jace Cobb. I know he's not here, but you want to take it on his behalf? Don't bend it now. Okay, there you go. All right, we got Abigail Whitehurst. Is she here? No, that's fine. No worries. We got Reese. Are you here? All right, there you go. All right, yeah, yeah. We got Olivia Wilcox. Is she? That's fine. You can be Olivia today. All righty. And we got, now you got to come up, Isaac, because you got to get your certificate. So I'm forcing you to get up here. Come on, come get your certificate. Come on, Isaac. Come on, Isaac, come on. Okay, all righty. Well, again, we're so excited uh, that y'all decided to, to, to get baptized and to accept Jesus Christ. And today, when you're sitting with your parents during the service, I hope you enjoy the message. There's going to be some fun parts in the message that you're going to really enjoy and love. And there's going to be some parts you'll probably fall asleep on, but that's okay, right? But I hope you enjoy the message because you're such an important part of this church. And I know you can take some of this message out. And message is the hands of Jesus. And, you know, Jesus gives us the ability to be his hands and his feet. And so you can do things at school that will showcase the hands and feet of Jesus so they can see the loving and care of our Father, so they too can want to be just like Jesus. Amen? Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for what you're doing in the lives of these children, Father God. May we be with the gym ministry and the Christian Brigade ministry as these children come and learn more about you and get closer to you. And Father God, it's going to be an exciting time, and I'm just so excited that you're going to be present with these kids each Sunday night from 4 to 5 30. For we say these things in your name. And the people said? Amen. Amen. All right, I'll go sit with your parents, okay? Good morning, church. Good morning. We've come to the time now, and you have a great opportunity for your participation in the service. And you can uh, well known uh, hymns. So I'm going to ask you to stand, please. And the words, the words on the screen. You can take your hymnal and the first one is number 206, Dwelling in Needle Land. 206, we're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 3. And remain standing for the second.
If you pull out your communion, that night in the upper room, our Lord Jesus Christ, he took that bread, he blessed it, he passed the disciples saying, this represents my body, which will be broken for you. Take this, eat, and that's remembrance of him. Then he took the cup. Again, he blessed it. He passed the disciples saying, this represents my blood, which we poured out for you. Take this, drink, remembrance of him. And as long as we take this cup and this bread, may we proclaim the Lord our God. And may we know that one day he will either come back for us or we will go to him. Amen.
So there was a house mouse that was roaming a farmhouse. And one day he poked his head out of the hole and saw the farmer's wife with a box. And this mouse was excited because he's had everything you could possibly think of to eat, right? He's like, oh, this is something new. And so he runs in the kitchen and he stares at that box and she pulls out a mouse trap. And she sets it up and she puts it in the kitchen. Now this mouse is now extremely scared. He doesn't know what to do, he's nervous. He ran right back in his hole panicking. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So he decides to go out to the, to the farm, and he runs to the chicken. And he says, Mr. Chicken, or Mrs. Chicken, I should say, I got a problem, and I need your hand. There's a mouse trap in the kitchen. I need your help. And the chicken's just like, it ain't my problem, and goes back just to eat and the mouse is just like distraught. And so he, he, he runs to the pig pen. And there's the big old pig just waddling in his mud. And the mouse goes, Mr. Pig, I have a problem. I need your hoof. Get it? Uh, too, too, too early, no coffee. Right, I need your hand. I need you to help me. There's a mouse trap in the kitchen. I need some help. And the pig, <laughs> ain't my problem. And the mouse again is just, at this point, the mouse is crying. Doesn't know what to do. So it runs to the cow. For sure, the cow will help me. He'll lend me a hand. Right? So he goes to the cow. And he says, Mr. Cow, I need some help. There's a mouse trap in the kitchen. I need you to help me get it. Get it away. And goes, move over. It's not my problem. Right? Again, no, nothing, okay. <laughs> My wife said not to use this one, I'm kidding. So the mouse now was upset, goes back to his mouse hole and just sits there in the dark and cries. Well, that night, there was a slap of the mouse trap, and the farmer's wife popped up out of her bed and was excited, went into the kitchen in the dark, picked up the mouse trap and said, I gotcha, but it wasn't a mouse. It was a poisonous snake, and it bit the farmer's wife, and she got a fever. So the next morning, the, the farmer's like, well, there's only one way to fix that problem, chicken soup. So he goes out to the, the farm and grabs the chicken and makes some chicken soup. And then she got really sick, and everybody was starting to visit. Family was coming in to visit. He was like, well, I got to have more food in the house to cook. So he goes out to the pig pen and gets some sausage and bacon. He takes that pig. And then, unfortunately, she passed away. And everybody in the community was coming to visit. And he's like, well, I, I got to have enough food for everybody. So he goes to the cow. Steaks. You see, one person's problem is a community problem. If that chicken would have helped, there would have been no chicken soup. If that pig would have helped, there would have been no bacon and sausage. If that cow would have helped, there would have been no steaks. We are the hands of our community. And when someone comes to us and says, I need help, don't be that chicken. Don't be that pig and don't be that cow. But be the hands of Jesus. Matthew 8, 28, 19, verse 20. We all know this is the Great Commission. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. One of the most complicated pieces of machinery in the world is the human hand. Take a look at your hand. It seems simple, right? Can you ball it up in a fist? Can you spread it out? Can you grab a cup of coffee in the morning, right? We use our hand, we don't even think about it. It just happens. We squeeze it, we stretch it. 
We take for granted because it's always there. It does things without us thinking about it. There are six different muscle groups in your hand. And over 65 different muscles, 27 bones are in there, 35 joints, nerves, blood vessels, ligaments, all working together to complete harmony so that you can do things like open up your hymnal or your Bible. It's complicated. In fact, it's so complicated that scientists cannot replicate the human hand because it's so complicated. But it wasn't complicated for a creator, God. He created our body. He created our hands and our feet. Everything about us, there's a purpose. And so holding that Bible today or holding that fork for lunch today, just think of the complex machinery you have at your disposal. If you compare your hands to the person sitting next to you, you'll notice some slight differences. Some are smaller, some are bigger, right? But they generally are the same. When you have a tough time in life or when you're scared, what do you normally tend to do with your hands? Cover your face? Maybe when you're angry, what do you do? You quench your hands. You squeeze them. When you're nervous, you put them in your pocket, right? Or you fiddle when we get nervous. You see, our hands are an important part of our body. And when we look at Jesus Christ, I want you to think about hands. You see, that night in the Garden of Eden, Jesus was overwhelmed with sorrow. He felt horrified. He fell to the ground and he put his hands together and he prayed to his father, Abba. Take this cup from me, but thy will be done. You see, Jesus could call a legion of angels to free him of this pain he was about to endure with his hands. But he knew it had to be his hands to be nailed to that cross. It had to be the cup. He had to take the cup. Isaac couldn't take the cup. He stopped Abraham. He knew that he was going to be the one that had to save us from death. And when we look at the hands, our hands, so many people have skills with their hands. So I have a basketball. Not a very good basketball, but it's a basketball. Now in my hands, how much do you think this basketball is worth? $10? Fifteen dollars. How much, Isaac? Zero, because they thought it was real money. There you go, zero. <laughs> but in the hands of LeBron James, ten million, fifteen million, fifty million. What's his contract? Three hundred million, whatever. With a basketball. And how does he play that basketball? With his hands and his feet, right? When we look at a football, now obviously ECU didn't play so good last night. They're in the wrong hands. <laughs> but when we look at this football, in my hands, I don't know, Walmart price $10, right? If it's an NFL official football, maybe 50 But in the hands of Peyton Manning, $60 million, more right? Millions and millions of dollars. When you think of a golf club, Alex, I need to use you real quick to be my tea. It's a nice golf club, very expensive golf club, maybe $100, $150 for a nice golf club in my hands. But in the hands of Tiger Woods, what do you think it's worth? Nothing now. Nothing now. <laughs> in his heyday, 
Nike paid him what? $200 million to be a sponsor, right? That one game where the, t where the, um, the, the ball just went into the hole and it stopped at the, the check sign. You, remember, you know what I'm talking about, Georgia. You know what I'm talking about. That right there was millions for Tiger Woods, right? He used a putter, you know? But again, it's all about whose hands that it's in. When we look at Jesus... To me, this is a glass of water. To me. Nothing special. Drink it. But when you put it in Jesus Christ's hands, it turns into wine. His very first miracle. His first miracle. And the reason why he did that miracle, because his mama told him to. Listen to your mamas kids, okay? And daddies. That's right. You see, I can take three nails. In my hands, I can probably do a birdhouse, maybe, right? But if you give these three nails to Jesus in his hands, why did it give? Salvation. Eternal life. My hands, nothing. Jesus' hands, everything. Everything. It's all about whose hands it's in. And with the Great Commission, what's so powerful is that Jesus gave us that gift. We received the Spirit. So guess what? Can we bring people alive from the grave? Can I, can, I, can I be a part of a conversation to help somebody have eternal life? Yes. But it's not me. It's who's doing it within me. God. Jesus. Jesus gives us that skill. He gives us that blessing, and it's free. All my hands, you're in. You see... Jesus' hands were very complex, but yet they were full of warmth, love, compassion, dedication, service, and on and on and on. His hands were just like us physically, but he knew who his father was, and he believed in his father. And because of that, he gave his disciples that same gift to be the hands of his father. You know, when we look at the different things that Jesus did, with his hands, he fed 10 to 15,000 people by just blessing some bread and some fish. How awesome! Is that? There's some other scriptures that we're going to read and go through. If they're on the screen, you may follow along. If not, you can uh, reach out your Bible. But Mark 9, 27. He had hands of blessings for little children and babies. And he laid his hands on them. Through his hands, he defeated the destruction of man's life by demons. He helped a kid who was... Engulfed in demons, he just touched them. And the demons were gone. I mean, this kid was quenching his teeth. The father was going to throw him in a fire. I mean, this is how bad it was all his life. And with the touch of Jesus, the demon was gone. The kid was free. Matthew 14, 31. Immediately Jesus stretched out his hands and took hold of him and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? This is Peter on the water. Jesus walking towards the boat. Peter's like, Is it you, Jesus? If it is, let me come out. Literally, Peter walked out of the boat. He was walking on water. And as soon as he looked down and around and the storms were coming, he had no faith. And he started sinking. And with the hand of Jesus pulled him up. Have faith in me, Peter. 
the hands. Luke 5, 13, and he stretched out his hands and touched him, saying, I am willing to be cleansed, and immediately the leprosy left him. Again, no one messed with people with leprosy. They were outside of the town. They could not be touched. They couldn't be looked at. They were just nothing. You did not touch them. Jesus touched them and healed them. John 9, 1 through 6. And he went along with the, and he saw a blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming. When no one can work, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with his saliva, and with his hands, he put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. Spit in mud. In the hands of Jesus, allowed a man to see. Is that not powerful? So we look at these examples and we see that Jesus is full of love. And full of gratitude for his Father. Full of compassion for his people. Even the night he was portrayed... He used his hands to put an ear back on a soldier's face. The night he could have just said, I don't want this. He healed a sinner. And he stopped his disciples from attacking. When he got beaten, he could have taken his hands and go, I'm done. But he embraced it. And instead on that cross, quenching his fingers to his palms, putting his hands in his pocket, or hiding them over his face, he stretched them out. Are you hearing me? He stretched them out and allowed his hands to be bind not by rope, by a nail. And his disciples and his mom and his cousins were there, couldn't do nothing. This is it. We're done. But three days later, the hands rolled that tomb away, and he awoke. He arose. And he went to the house of the disciples and said, Thomas, touch it. Touch it. It is me. Such an amazing, amazing love that our Father has for us. And you ask why? Because we're sinners. From the beginning, Adam and Eve took that fruit They condemned the world. But even then, God knew he was going to bring hope and bring life. But we still say, does he really love us? Does he truly care for us? Well, no longer do you have to worry about God loving you, about Jesus wanting you. You see, Jesus was the only person born without sin. Yes, he had a body, he had hands, he had feet. But he humbled himself, sacrificing himself for us. He has cleansed us of all of our sins. Because of Jesus, your hands are no longer sinful. Hear that. Because of Jesus... Your hands 
are no longer sinful. Your soul has been purified by the blood of Jesus Christ. In the eyes of God, you are perfect because Jesus has washed all your sins away. I want you to truly understand that, that you are perfect in God's eyes because he made you. No makeup can make you as beautiful as God made you in the womb. No clothes can get you that look than what God gave you in the womb. Nothing can make you perfect but God. You are perfect. And every morning, I'm sure we look in the mirror. Sometimes I don't. When I'm not matching, I just don't look. As wife says. But when we look in the mirror, we see ourselves. Do you smile when you see yourself in the mirror? Or does it look like this? <sighs> My hair. Or, oh, you know, do you, do you get angry at yourself in the mirror? Right? We are perfect in God's image. To God, we are perfect and we are loved. You no longer have to wonder about what God thinks of you. You no longer have to wonder, does God really love me? Have you ever had that thought? Does God really love me? You never have to wonder how the world looks at you. You never have to wonder about the mistakes you made or going to make. You never have to wonder that your hardships and your difficulties are because you're a sinner. You never have to wonder, am I alone in this world? You never have to wonder, why me? You never have to wonder that you are not cared for. God loves you. Jesus died for you. And he rose for you. God has not withdrawn his loving hand from your life. Instead, he's offered his loving hand, his whole self, as a sacrifice to take your sins away. God will never, never, never stop caring. God will never, never, never turn your back, turn his back on you. Jesus Christ took the punishment for the mistakes that we have made in our life. You have been forgiven. I want you to say that with me. Say, I have been forgiven. I have been forgiven. Do you truly believe that? Because the whole purpose of this church is to truly preach the gospel. And the gospel is truth. And the gospel is the reason why we're here. The gospel is the reason why we have eternal life. God has forgiven you. And I want you to believe that. The kids that got baptized last Sunday night, they're entering to heaven. Do you believe that? Absolutely. And again, there is a hell. You have to believe in that too. I'm not a fire and brimstone preacher. I'm not going to do that. But I tell you, there's a heaven and there's a hell. And God created you to go to heaven. But he loves you so much, he gives you free will. You choose what you want to do. But there's so much evidence in the court of law to show the love that Jesus has for us. You see, those same hands that prayed and that were tied up 
pierced. Those hands are free now. Amen? They're free. And they're holding your hands while you walk through life. Now the hands of Christ are even carrying you through your most difficult times. My friends, my brothers and sisters, you will always be good. You will always be in good hands. The best hands with Jesus Christ. And I want you to truly believe that. In the beginning of my message, we talked about the Great Commission. He gave us the ability to preach and to teach and to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look at your hands. Raise them up. Look at your hands. These hands, through the grace of Jesus, can help you guide somebody to eternal life. You can't do it. But he can, because he gave it to us. As DJ will come forward and just play, the last set of scripture is John 13, 12 through 15. So that's John chapter 13, starting at 12. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them, you call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I am your Lord and teacher, wash your feet you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. You see... Jesus got on his knees with his disciples. And he says, I'm going to wash your feet. I'm going to bend down. I'm going to kneel. And I'm going to wash your feet. So he took that bowl and he put it down on a cloth. And he poured some water. And he began to wash his disciples' feet. Now let me tell you about the feet in the biblical age. They were not as clean as yours are today. You've got shoes on or some type of covering, socks. They were barefooted back then. So to clean someone's feet was a true servanthood because you're getting down and dirty and Jesus got down and dirty with his disciples and he told his disciples now you get down and dirty with your brothers and sisters so during this time the altar is open I'm up here I'm ready to clean your feet if you want your feet cleaned so that you can go and clean others, come see me. Because I'm not afraid to clean your feet. I'm not afraid to be a servant of God. I love my God, and my God loves me. So come, give yourself to Jesus. Pray for someone that you know is struggling with cancer, who are going through treatments. Pray for somebody who's having a, a, a mental issue maybe, 
maybe having some problems at school or at work. Pray for someone who just got fired. Pray for this world. Pray for this community. Pray for somebody who's trying to be a mom and dad. Justin Anderson. Pray. This is your time to come pray to your father. You can pray at your seat. That's perfectly fine. Or you can come to the altar and lay it down. And we're just going to let the service end. You can get up. But if you want your feet washed, because you're ready to wash others' feet, I'm here. I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to leave the altar and the chair available. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Oh, Father God, thank you for your hands. Your hands that created us. Your hands that created your Son. Father God, thank you for your Son, Jesus' hands. who came on this earth to just grasp the nail. Grasp the pain. To be that example and to help people see. To help people be cleansed to help purify people's lives. Thank you so much for that, Father. And we know that that's still happening today, Father God. You're still doing miracles. But Father God, help us to be open. Help us to allow you to use our hands, not our physical hands, but allow God's hands through us to just deliver the message to those, to be that physical example, to be, not be afraid to get down and dirty, to show love to one another. As we leave this place, may we not leave anything unturned. May we not leave anything regretful. May we leave this congregation, may we leave this church, your house, cleansed and forgiven. And may we start anew. Because with you, Father God, there's no mistakes. And you will forgive us. And you love us. And you care for us. Father God, I say these things. In your name and in your son's name. Amen.